move around in the interface, I'll quickly show you what we have in a default scene. So in a default scene, if I'm moving around here with the middle mouse button, you can see we have a camera. So if you just left click, you can select a camera. Or if you left click on the cube here, you can select that. Or if you left click on this object here, that's your lamp or your light. And that's what's gonna eventually, we're not gonna be talking about that today, but that's what will light your scene if you were to do a render. So for now, the only thing we're gonna be interested in is this default primitive here, which is just the default cube. Um, now, if you, for example, wanted to start with any other kind of primitive to model it, you could just go Shift A. So if you hit Shift A in Blender, that's what brings up your add menu. So usually when you're gonna do modeling, the thing we're always gonna be starting with are our meshes. These are the actual pieces of geometry in the, the 3D software that you can manipulate and extrude and move around. So in this case, you can see there's the default cube. Here's just a simple plane. Here's a circle, here's a UV sphere. It's all just like play school level stuff, like little shapes you would have learned about in kindergarten. So let's just not worry about that because we already have the default cube. And if we want to work in Blender, we have usually a front view. So if you have a number pad on your keyboard, you can hit one and that'll take you into the front orthographic view. If you hit three, that'll take you into the right orthographic view. If you hit seven, it'll take you to the top orthographic view. Now, if you have a laptop and you don't have a number pad, you can go to edit. You can go over to Preferences, and you can go over here to Inputs, and you can go Emulate Number Pad. So if you don't have a number pad, and you just have the basic 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on on the top of your keyboard, you can press Emulate Number Pad, and then you can close this, and that'll do the same thing. If you want to do it manually, you can just go to View, and then you can go to Viewport, and you can choose Top, Bottom, Front, and Left. So up here in View, that's how you do that. But I would definitely recommend getting a custom to the viewport shortcut. So for example, one is front of graphic view, three is the right of graphic view. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna hit one on a number pad, and you're gonna see up here, it says front orthographic. You can see right up here, it says front orthographic. And once again, you can just go here to viewport and go into the front if number pad didn't work for you. And we're gonna now select the default cube. And the way you know it's selected, you can see it has this orange outline. So if I quickly deselect it, you can see there's no orange outline, but if I click on it, I can see it's an orange outline, so I know it's what we call active. And I can also look up here in my scene collections, and I can see under this collection, here's my cube, and the cube is highlighted. It's got this blue bar around it, so I know it is an active element in my scene. So it's not my light, it's not my camera, but it's the cube itself that is selected. Now, we're currently in what we call object mode in Blender. So that's this mode up here, right? In object mode, we can see objects. We can also move them around and rotate them. But what we want to do today is we actually want to edit the geometry itself, the mesh. And to do that with this cube active, we need to actually go up to object mode and go into our edit mode. There are other things you can do in object mode. For example, if you hit the G key, you can move. If you hit the R key, you can rotate. If you hit the R key twice, you can rotate uh, on all axes, axes like this. But if you also um, hit S, you can scale. So that's super useful, but we're not gonna be focusing on that today. We're gonna actually be getting into the edit mode. So let's go over to our edit mode with the cube active. And what we can see here is all of these points here, which we call vertices, right? If it's a single ver vertice, we, or we call it a vertex, okay? So what we're gonna do now is you can click on any one of these verts here and you can see they become active. You can also see up here we're currently in vertex select mode, which means if we have that enabled, we can select a vertex. If we then want to select one of these edges, we can click on the edge select mode and then we can click on edges. So if I click on this edge or this edge, you can see we are able to select them. Then we have this thing here called face select mode, which enables us to, as the name implies, we can select individual faces. So I'm selecting this face, now I can select this face. So what we're gonna be doing in this tutorial, we'll be going in between these little modes often. So let's start by just practicing some selection. So with the face select enabled, if you wanna select more than one face at a time, right? So for example, I wanna select both of these. What you can do is you can click on the face first, like this one, for example, and if you hold in shift, you can click on the second face and then the third face. And then you can hold your middle mouse button, you can still move around, then just hold and shift again and you can keep selecting faces. And holding and shift will allow you to 
select multiple faces. If I let go of shift and then I click on another face, all of a sudden it just selects that face. So that's how you do multiple face selections. The exact same thing goes with edges. If I select one edge and then I hold in shift, I can select another one. Hold in shift, I can select the third one and so on. And the exact same thing applies to the vertices. If I want to select one vertex, I can go over to the next one by holding in shift and so on and so forth. So you can see that's how it all works. So that's just different ways of selecting the, essentially the same mesh, but just in a different way. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit one now to go into our front orthographic view. And once again, if you go to view, you can go to viewport and do that over here by going front. And if we want to be able to model this, one thing that I'm going to teach you about are modifiers. So modifiers are these things down here. If you go and you click on the modifier properties, you can see something here called add modifier. So if we click on add modifier, you're going to see a whole bunch of things which we won't be focusing on today, but they essentially give our mesh or our geometry certain kind of properties that they apply to them that can sometimes make things easier for us. For example, if we go over down here under the gener generate, we can go over to what's called a mirror modifier. And the mirror modifier is essentially just going to take this geometry and take one side of it and mirror it exactly the same on the opposite side. So let's quickly go ahead and add in a mirror modifier. And now we need to select our geometry and just move it to the side. So what we're going to actually do is we can hit A to select all of the geometry. Then in our front orthographic view, we can go G, X, and move it over to the side. You can see it's actually mirrored on this side here. And over here, you can see that's our X axis. The X axis, you can also see up here, this little gizmo shows us the X goes this way, right? The Z goes up and down like this, and then the Y goes like that. But that's from our right orthographic view, which we're not working in currently. So just hit one to go back to your front orthographic view. And over here, you can see we have the cube mirrored on the X. You can also change these, by the way. So you can change them like this if you want to work on different axes, but we won't be doing that. Just focus on the X for now. But what we also want to do is we want to come over here and enable clipping. When we enable clipping and we take this cube and we go G, X, Remember, it's all selected because we hit A to select everything. So we're going to go G, X, and we're going to move it in. And you can see these are clipping together now there in the middle. So we're going to bring it in just about this much. And you can see they're clipping together. See there. And if we hit G and then X to move it back on the X, so hit G and X, move it this way. You can see they're kind of stuck together. And that's what clipping is for, which is all good. Now they're fused together. And whatever we do on this side, we'll copy on that side. But at the moment, if we hit Z, so if you hit Z on your keyboard, you can go to what we call wireframe, so you can actually see through this. And at the moment, there is actually a face in between these two, which we don't want. So guys, there's actually a face here. If I just un come over here and I hide the modifier, you can see there's a face in here. So let's just go to face select, select this face by clicking on it, then hit X and delete that face. Once again, select it, hit X, and just delete the face. Now we can just bring that back and make sure clipping is enabled. So now what we can do is we can hit A again to select all of the geometry. And this time we want to flatten it, but on the Y axis, this one over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit S to scale and we're going to go Y and we're going to scale it down on the Y to flatten it. So about this much, okay? If you hit one to go back to your front orthographic view, you can hit G, X, and you can move it like this. So we want something that looks like this and then from the side, looks like that. Doesn't have to be exact, but just roughly these proportions. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our edge select option, and we're gonna hit A twice to deselect everything. So double tap A. And then we're gonna select this face here, or edge, so make sure you're on your edge select. And once you've clicked on it, hold in shift, go to the other side, and then click on this edge. Now they're both active as you can see. And then we're going to go S and we're going to hit Y and we're going to scale it on the Y like this. As you can see, that's really easy to do. And then we're going to hit one to go into our front orthographic view. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit Z on our keyboard and we're going to go to wireframe. Then we're going to go to our vertex select option. We're going to click here and we're going to drag. So click and drag and we're going to select just these bottom verts. And then we're going to go G, Z, and move them up to where that red line is here. That's our X axis. So you can see it's our floor pretty much. And then we're going to go G, X, and we're going to move these in just a little bit on the X like that. 
And while we have those verts selected or active, we're going to go E to extrude and then Z, and we're going to extrude them down. So extruding them down to about here, like that. So you can see we have almost like an hourglass here. And if you want to go back into solid view, you can go Z and then just click on solid. So now we're back in solid view. And now we kind of have the, the torso of the body. As you can see, the upper chest and the bottom of our model here, the, the bottom of the torso. But what we want to do now, where this face is here, we want to extrude a leg. So we went into our front view and with those faces or vert still active in our front view, we're just going to go R to rotate and we're going to rotate it a little bit like this. But one of the issues we're going to run into now, if we hit E to extrude and we try to extrude that face in, they're kind of clipping together here, which is not what we want. So we're going to just hit Control Z to undo that or Command Z. And we have to temporarily just come here under our modifiers to our mirror modifier and just untick clipping. So now if we hit E to extrude and we extrude it out, so I just hit E to extrude, so we're extruding it out, and then just click somewhere here to, to stop that action. You can see we've now extruded the legs. We can now enable clipping again, as we do still need the clipping. With this um, vert still selected or active, we can now go S to scale them. And if you accidentally did deselect them, all you have to do is just click somewhere here, just drag over them and select them. You can also just go to your face select and just select the face. So for now, let's just actually go to face select and select the face. Go into our front view again for that face active. We're just going to go down to about here, which would be where our knees are. Bring them in a little bit closer. And then we're going to just rotate. So hit R to rotate in your front view. Flatten them out just a bit. And then E to extrude. Bring them down to about here. And then S to scale with that face still active. And then G and just move it over to the side. So hit G and just move it over like that. So you can see now we have the legs coming down like that. Very, very simple, very basic so far. But let's get started with the top here. So we're going to go, so holding in my middle mouse button to rotate, I'm going to select the top face here. And then what we're going to do is go back into our front view and we're going to go R to rotate. And we're going to rotate that face just a little bit like this, just to give a bit of a slant to the shoulder. And then we're going to do something that might be a little bit tricky if you're new to it, but we need to add in some extra geometry here. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to go over to our edge select here. So click on edge select. Then you're going to hover your cursor over this edge here. And if you hit control R or command R, you should see this yellow line appearing. And if you roll your middle mouse button, you can see these yellow lines increase. If you roll it down, they decrease. So that is what we call a cut. We're adding in an edge loop here or a cut. So once you see the yellow line, just left click and you can move the the cursor once you've left click done your left click to slide it once you've kind of let go of it so if you click again and that option is no longer there you can just hit G twice with that edge still active so hit G twice and that allows you to slide it along the edges so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to slide it right down to about here and that gives us this square over here so let's quickly go to our face select option click on this square and then we're going to go into our front orthographic view and we're just going to go S to scale and we're going to scale that square down a bit so just S to scale and go back into your front view rotate it a little bit more and then G to move it over to the side a bit so just hit G and then you're going to go E to extrude and then with that face still active you're going to go R to rotate and once again I'm always going to my front orthographic view by hitting one on the numpad. So we're just going to rotate that face like that. Then we're going to click on this bottom face. Once again, back into our front view. R to rotate it a little bit like this. G to move it up. And now we're going to go E and we're going to extrude that face out. I'm going to bring it to about here and then S to scale it and then hit G and move it just to the side here. You can kind of use a bit of creative license here, place it however you want, but I'm just going to put mine here. And then we go R to rotate. Then I'm going to go E to extrude. And then I'm going to go S, X, and just flatten that face. Just like that for now. And then I'm going to hover over this edge here with my cursor, and I'm going to go Control R. Once again, we see the yellow line. Just left click. 
you can move the cursor to move it, but I'm just gonna leave it there by left clicking again. Go into your front view and then with that active, you can just hit G and just move it out just a little bit and then R to rotate that edge. So now we have the arms coming together. It's still very primitive at this point, but we are trying to make this as basic as possible for beginners to understand how modeling works. So let's um, hold in shift in the front view just so we can move around once again, just remember that. And roll your middle mouse button to zoom in. And now we're just gonna hit Z and we're gonna go into wireframe. And we're gonna go to our vertex select option. And over here in the front, you can just click anywhere and drag and we can select vertices. So I'm just gonna select these guys here. I'm gonna hit G and I'm just gonna move it up just to make the legs a little bit shorter. And this is where you can come in and you can correct the proportions however you want. So it's completely up to you how you wanna do that. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as is. And with these bottom verts actually selected here, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna scale them just a little bit more and we're gonna make the feet. So in your front view with those selected, we're gonna go E to extrude them down to about here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Z we're gonna go into solid view. Go to your face select and once again, select the face over here. We're just moving over to the side a bit. In fact, hit free on your number pad to go into the right orthographic view. And if that's face active, you're gonna go E to extrude and then Y and you're gonna extrude it forward on the Y, like so. Go to your edge select, select this edge here and then go G, Z and bring it down. Go back to face select, select the face here. And then we're gonna hit seven or Control-7 or Command-7 to go into the bottom orthographic view. You can also just go to View, Viewport, and then go to Bottom. And if that face is still active, we're gonna go R to rotate it, and then S, X, I'm gonna scale it a little bit on the X. Maybe just rotate it a little bit like this by hitting R. Then go to your Vertex Select option, and holding and Shift, just click on this vertex and this vertex, so they're both active. Control seven again to go into our bottom orthographic view. And then G just to move them out like that. And then hold, click on this one, hold and shift and select this one. Control seven again to go into the bottom. And you can just move that however you need to. Just to kind of make the bottom of the foot. So just use how much, um, however much creative license you need. But just something like that, basic should be fine. And then we can come over this corner here with our cursor, hit Control R and you can see a yellow line appearing. Just left click and then move down to here. Left click again and then just S to scale that in to kind of make a bit of an ankle. And that's how simple that is. Double tap A to deselect everything, Shift and Alt. So if you hold Shift and Alt in, you can actually click on an edge and that'll loop select the whole edge. So once again, just practice that. Shift, Alt, and then click on an edge, it'll loop select it. And you can go S to scale that as well, however you want. So I'm just gonna scale that down just a little bit. You can also just hit G in your front view just to move it like that. So just position the knees where you feel you need to, but around here should be okay. So far, it's all coming together pretty well. So let's start working on the upper body here. To come to the upper body, Select this vertex here and then double tap G just to slide it back a bit. And then we're gonna to go to our face select option. We're gonna select this face here. And now we're gonna hit E to extrude. And once you've hit that, we're gonna hit S right after it to scale in. So we're gonna scale it into here. And then we're gonna go G, Y, and we're gonna move it, or G, X, and we're gonna move it in like this. And then we're gonna go G, Z, and just move it up a little bit like that. And then to flatten it, we're gonna go S and then Z. So S and Z, and we're just gonna flatten it on the Z just a little bit. We're then gonna go E to extrude, move it up like this, and then G, X to move it in a bit. And now what we can do with that face still active, we can hit Control plus or Command plus just to grow the selection once. Then we can go G, Y, and that'll allow us to move that all back just a little bit. If you now hit free on your number pad, you can go to the side of graphic view. And over here, you can also hit G if you want to move it around a little bit easier. So just about here, we don't want the neck too forward or right in the middle, just a little bit more back. Then you can go to your vertex select and you can select these chest vertices here and just move them to flatten them out a bit 
just so the chest isn't as pointy at the front. So just like that, you can also select the verts at the back and just move them in. The ones on the shoulder here, you can also move it in. The arm itself should not be sitting um, too forward in the body. In fact, an easy way to solve this is just to go Shift Alt, click on an edge down here to loop select it, go Control Plus and grow the selection until the whole arm is active. So that should be enough. And so just make sure it's only these here that are selected, the arm. Go to your thing here called proportional editing. So if you click on that, you can now go G, Y and move it back. And if you roll your middle mouse button while you're doing that, you can control the fall off. So how much goes along with it. So we're gonna roll the middle mouse button till it's quite small. And we're only gonna move the arm back on the Y just a little bit like that. So once again, I just hit G, Y to move it along the Y. So just back a little bit. You can go into your right orthographic view by hitting free and you can actually see the arm doesn't need to be in the middle, just a little bit back like that. And what we can also do is just select this vert down here and just bring that in a bit. It doesn't need to be so um, thick here at the front. So just using proportional editing here, you can select verts you can move them around and you can roll your middle mouse button to control the fall off. So this is a really powerful modeling tool here. I use it a lot in my own work. At the moment, the waist here is a little bit thick. So if you come here to um, the edge here, you can go control R, just click twice, disable proportional editing, and then just go G, Y, or G, X. So G, X, and just move it in a little bit like that. So we already have this little guy coming together quite well. So let's go over to our head. So we're gonna go over to our face select, select this face here. And then we're gonna go E to extrude. We're gonna extrude it up to here. And then we're gonna go E one more time to extrude it about this much. And then we're gonna select this face. Holding in shift, we're gonna select this face as well. And then we're gonna go E to extrude forward. And then S, and we're gonna scale that like so. We're then gonna select this back face here. Go into your right orthographic view and then go G and just move that back and then select this top face here and just G and move it up in your side view. You can also just hit G, Z, G, Z to move it up on the Z, but we're gonna move it up to about here. And we're just making a really basic head. If you hit one to go into your front orthographic view, you can just rotate that face like so. And you can also just select these side faces here in your front view, G, just to move them over to the side. And at the moment, the neck's a bit thick. So if we come in here over this corner, we can hit Control R, click twice, and then S to scale. And now we can just add a little bit of um, more definition to the neck. And we can also go Shift Alt and click on this edge here and in our front view, we can go G to move it around. And this is an easy way to kind of define the neck a little bit. It really depends on the character you're making. You might want a bit of a thicker neck, but just something like this should be fine. So you can now kind of see we're getting this guy coming together quite well. Um, in the front view as well, you can just select some of these points on the face, just kind of move them around. And by no means are we trying to make this look really um, accurate. This is very low poly. We're just gonna select this face here and we're gonna go G and just also move that down. So just creating a super basic head model here. Maybe just grab this edge here, hit G and just move it in a bit. So now we have a very low poly character here, but what we can do to make this look even better, once again, we can go to our modifiers tab and now on top of this modifier here, let's go down, click on it, go to the generate and let's add a subdivision surface modifier. What the subdivision surface modifier does essentially, it just subdivides each face and it's something that you can turn on and off. And you can also come here to the viewport level and increase that. The render here is simply just what it's gonna be when it does a final render. What we're gonna be focusing on here is actually just at the moment, the viewport display, because that's what we're actually seeing. So I've clicked on that now, and I've bumped it up to two. And now we can see it's a lot smoother, but we're still seeing this cage out here the rough, um, approx the, like the rough cage we originally modeled. If you want that to kind of hug against that modifier, you can come over here and click on this cage on, and it'll put that on it like so. 
and it looks a little bit nicer. So I'm going to click on that and now we can just do the exact same thing. You can go into your front view, you can just select edges, so I still have my edge select here. You can hit G to move it. You can enable proportional editing to control the fall off, um, whatever you need. So this is where you can kind of look at a reference image and kind of just define the shape of your model or your character a little bit more. And that's a very, very fun and powerful tool to use. And you can select different edges on the, the torso, bring them in a bit, just to find the, the mesh a little bit more and stuff like that. You can come over here to your leg, shift alt, just click on this edge here, go to your right view and just go G and just move the leg forward a bit to give it some dynamic. And you can also go hit Z, go into wireframe, go to vertex select and then just click and select these bottom verts and go G, Y and just move them back a bit like so. Just create a little bit of a bend in the legs there. So here you can see um, using some very basic and rudimentary modeling techniques we've kind of made a figure and once again I'm keeping this super basic for absolute beginners that's why it's a very basic looking model with no like big features it's just getting the main proportions established so what we can do now if we want to make some very basic hands is we can simply just go to our face select then just select this face down here and with that active we're gonna hit G and just move it in a little bit I'm in my front orthographic view and then just E to extrude it a little bit more and then I'm going to come over here over this edge here and I'm going to go control R click twice and then double G just to slide it up a bit then I'm going to go to my face select and I'm going to select this face right here then I'm going to go to my right orthographic view and I'm going to go R to rotate and then G to move it forward a bit then I'm going to go E to extrude like so, and then E to extrude one more time. And then I'm going to disable proportional editing. And with that face active, I'm just going to go Control Plus, and then I'm going to go S, X, and I'm just going to scale that down a bit. Just to make a very, very simple looking thumb, we can select this face here. We can go G, Y, and just move it back a bit. And then you can come over this edge, Control R, click twice, double G to slide down to here and an S just to scale it like that, just to create a basic wrist. So this is a very, very simple character. You can just select edges anytime you want, G to move them. So I might want to select this edge here, G to move that. Very, very simple. All I'm doing is I'm with my edge select here, I'm moving around, clicking on edges, and I'm hitting G to move them. Let's hit one to go back into our front orthographic view. And here you can see we have the basic character done. So I'm just going to go back into object mode over here. So go into object mode. You can also hit the tab key as a shortcut to do that. And at the moment it's not looking very smooth. So with this cube still active, we're going to go to object mode up here and we're going to go shade smooth. So now we have nice smooth shading on here. And if you want this guy, so example in object mode, if I were to hit R to rotate him, you can see he's actually rotating around this point here, which is what we call an origin point. But what we want that origin point to be is at the bottom of the feet. A quick way to do that is just to tab into edit mode, hit A to select everything, and then in, go G, Z, and just move it up till his feet or where that little orange dot is or where the floor is. So he should be sitting right on the floor. Then we're going to go back into object mode. And now if we hit R, you can see here rotates around that origin point. So here now in our scene, we have this character here that's really low poly. So that means there's very few points you actually have to edit when you go into edit mode. But he also has a subdivision surface modifier which makes him look nice and smooth. So once you've learned these basic extrusion um, techniques and also just how to select verts, how to select edges, and how to select faces, and also how to scale them, rotate them, and extrude them, right? Once you've learned that, you can pretty much make anything in a 3D space, and you can also use your subdivision surface modifier. You can at any time come over one of these edges here, hit Control R, click twice, double G to slide, and add in more geometry. 
And that's how simple this is. I hope you guys enjoyed this absolute beginner's tutorial on modeling in Blender. I know it's a little bit lengthy, but it is for absolute beginners. So this is probably, if you're really new to this, this might be one of your first um, creations in Blender. And I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm just gonna go back into object mode here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll quickly show you guys the one I made earlier when I was practicing this.